Hello and welcome Thomas Sheridan. Thank you very much for joining us today on LegalizeFreedom.com. Hi Greg, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Not at all, my pleasure. And I, I've uh, hooked up with you today because recently went and uh, heard you give a presentation uh, at an event over in Manchester and as part of that I uh, discovered your books, uh, the most recent of which is Defeated Demons, Freedom from Consciousness Parasites in Psychopathic Society. Uh, very interesting read, I have to say, quite quite disturbing read, to be honest with you at times. And the nub of it seems to be basically uh, what a lot of people suspect but can't maybe put a name to it, is that um, there's a psychopathic element in human society and surprise, surprise, for the most part, it's running, it's running things. And once you realize that, once you come to that understanding and once you look under that stone, as it were, a lot of things about society, about the world that don't make sense, seen through that psychopathic lens, suddenly start to make sense. So I'll get you to comment on that in general. But also, I know you have a sort of a definition of um, psychopath um, in uh, you talk about it in both books. Uh, perhaps you can just set out for folks who might be thinking psychopath, that's Hannibal Lecter, it's uh, Anders Breivik, people like that. But there's a bit more to it than that, isn't there? Yeah, well, those kinds of people are psychopaths, too. But there's a psychopathic spectrum. Uh, not very, very few psychopaths are violent. I mean, physically violent. Very, very few. That's too messy for them. But all of them are psychologically and emotionally violent. And that's where they really damage us. They get into our heads, both collectively and as individuals. And they change our reality to make us believe, essentially, that in time, that black is white and white is black. Uh, this is called crazy making. It's also another th technique they use called gaslighting, which I'll talk about later. The standard definition for the term psychopath was, it's been around for about 100 years. It started in the Victorian era. But Herbie Cleckley, an American psychiatrist in the 1947 book, The Mask of Sanity, basically said a psychopath is an individual who is otherwise a facsimile of a normally functioning human being who creates, a, who creates false personas inside themselves in order to target people for repeatedly and deliberately purposeful destructive behavior. They have an internal state of chaos, and this internal state of chaos they project onto others by causing chaos around others and around their, their environment, and indeed not only their relationships, but even entire societies. And this chaos allows the psychopath to maintain control. So a psychopath is an individual who has an internal state of chaos, and then by being a facsimile or being a copy of a normal person, in its behavior, then manipulates everyone around them by creating chaos and then capitalizes upon this chaos. Order out of chaos. Dare order out of our chaos. So essentially by concentrating or having our minds concentrated, having our attention directed to one particular extreme of psychopathic behavior, which you're saying is actually a minority behavior, um, we're missing out the spectrum of psychopathic behavior, the broad range that there actually is. Oh yes, there's hundreds of millions of psychopaths in the world, even by the most conservative estimates. It's around, it, it's it's about one in twenty-seven people in society are psychopathic to some degree. So you are literally surrounded by hundreds of millions of them. They're not all extreme. Most of them would just be parasites and users, people who manipulate, de deceive and use other people. It could be anything from marrying them just to find a place to live, to stealing their money, to swindling them out of their, their you know, pension, to just even conning and manipulating them for a one-night stand. But the thing is, what makes a psychopath very different than any other human being, and we've all done things in our lives that we, you know, we're all ashamed of, but that's the difference. A psychopath has absolutely no shame, no remorse, and no guilt. That goes from stealing someone's wallet all the way up to committing genocide. It's just a business thing with them. When they want something or they need something, they will do whatever it takes to get it. There will be no morality. There will be no question of, you know, of a moral imperative. It's purely just, 
I need this, I want that, I'm taking it. And that's the end of it. And they don't, they don't care who they destroy, kill, or emotionally or psychologically torture along the way, because that will also be part of the technique to get what they want from others. And that's what happens. You see, they deliberately put this, you see, because most of the, the world's, you know, institutions, both political and corporate and things like, you know, intergovernmental global groups and transnational organizations, because they're run by psychopaths or at least run according to a psychopathic philosophy, if they have a vested interest in telling Hollywood and TV to make sure that everyone who's a psychopath is portrayed as either Hannibal Lecter or or as uh, Norman Bates, to put them into an, an almost kind of a, a mythological motif mm. where they're kind of real and they're not real and this takes the, this takes our eye off the ball of what's really going on well given that the natural human state seems to be empathy for our fellow human beings and a general desire to to help people you know and to have relationships and family and all those things to, are priorities when we're allowed to be ourselves to be human a lot of, this is what I was alluding to at the start, a lot of the insanity in the world, the the, the violence and the destruction and the, and the, you know, certain policies, uh, environmental destruction and the financial system, all of which to people, average people, just seems to be insane and seems to be self-destructive or destructive of everything around it or, you know, just a, a one way, like absolute blind alley, one way street starts to make sense when you consider that uh, although you and I don't have any great desire to control uh, organizations, to control other people, to tell other people what to do, that there is a tendency in society to do that, and they tend to get their hands on the reins of power, and mayhem follows. Exactly. And the world does begin to make sense because it's been engineered to be nonsensical. I often refer to the psychopaths in positions of power as the merchants of nonsense. That's what they really, at the end of the day, provide us with. And it's not, it doesn't even have to be anything as spectacular as like vast environmental destruction. It's even quite small things like when people would read the paper and you hear one year that coffee will give you cancer, and then the next week, another report comes out telling you that coffee will cure cancer. And then another week after that, that coffee is bad for pregnant women. And then another week after that, another report that coffee is great. See, we're constantly being driven mad. We cannot think straight. And if we can't think straight, we acquiesce and hand over our psychological sovereignty to these authority figures. Our education system has also played an enormous part in this as well. We've been deliberately engineered to have our left brains dominant over our right brains in terms of how we function. And what we are basically in life after we've completed our education is we're like a charioteer that has a chariot where one wheel is bigger than the other, with the left mm. side of the left brain. And we're constantly trying to maintain control just to survive, just to get by. And eventually we, we say, well, the hell with that. And we, we ask for we Then we depend on experts uh, appointed to tell us how to think, and this is why we. This is how we're played in the traps constantly. They've made, you know, that's why. That's why the most close-minded and the most, uh, in my opinion, pathetic people on this earth are the ones that have the highest levels of education. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as you get to a PhD, you've got a closed mind that's incapable of thinking of anything new, and that's all part of their system as well.